Hello, my name is Zach Abel, and uh, I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. How are you doing, first of all? And congratulations with uh, your new signing with Island Records. Talk to me about how that opportunity happened and what was it about Island Records that made you want to say yes to this partnership? Oh, okay. Uh, so first question was, how am I? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm alive, grateful to be here. I've had some meals and I've got a roof over my head. So all is well. Um, the second question was, uh, congratulations on Be Kind. Thank you. Um, yeah, very chuffed that that one's out. And um, also very overwhelmed with all the messages I've been getting. So thank you for anyone who's done that. And the third thing was Island. Um, what made me want to sign with Island? Um, well, I think the fact that they are in the US, um, it was a big thing. Um, I've always wanted to tour the US and kind of like have my music be present in the US. Uh, and I never really had that opportunity before. So I, um, yeah, when the opportunity came about, I was like, yeah, I want to pounce on that. Um, and yeah, that's about it really. Do you remember like what, what got them to listen to your music or what got them to pay attention? Um, we just sent some demos over of, of some of the tracks that I was working on for this album. And I think that they completely got what I was trying to do. And I think that if you're looking for, you know, someone to partner up with, you want someone who's kind of already on the same page as you so that you, you don't have any kind of like creative conflicts. Um, there's always going to be some creative conflict anyway, but at least start in a place where you see things uh, the same. And I definitely felt like um, Island Records had that so that was it was an easy decision for me uh, as we mentioned earlier be kind is the first um first new single of the year um and i think this is the first release uh with since the signing correct so um you know talk to me about this track in particular and for you personally why did you feel like this was the proper introduction and now to this new u.s type of audience or fan base um i just feel like when I wrote it, which was like a year ago, I wrote it because I felt like, you know, looking on social media and looking at the world, I just felt like everyone was very divided and quite intolerant of other people, especially other people who might have a different kind of experience to you. Um, and, you know, last year and this year, like right now, I feel like that's basically the same. Um, not much has changed. Um, and so I was like, I really want to put out this message of actually, you know, I think we should be more kind to each other, um, regardless of, you know, whether someone has uh, a different life experience and I kind of didn't want to wait anymore to, uh, to put that message out there. Talk to me about that initial writing process for the song and, and kind of co uh, co-writing it with Nate, uh, Cyphers and, you know, what, what really initially kickstarted this, this song? Was there a particular lyric, like that idea that you just mentioned right now, or like, was there some kind of instrumentation that you kind of, that you guys kind of had in mind? Um, so what really like started it? Um, so I, yeah, I wrote it with um, Nate Cypher and Nick Ruth. Um, mm -hmm. I'd worked with actually both of them before in London, uh, but never together. And what started it was literally just like us talking for like an hour or two about, you know, politics, the world, how we were feeling that day, whether we wanted coffee or not. Literally, we spoke about everything. And I guess the topic of Be Kind um, was something that I think we were all feeling at the time. And I think we actually just started, <laughs> the song started by us making a list of all the things um, which could be relevant in someone's life, but were not eligible to, dis to uh, decide, decide whether or not you should be kind to that person. Like, for example, their race. That is completely irrelevant uh, when you think about whether or not, when you're deciding whether or not to be kind to someone. And so we kind of just like started listing things which should not be, should not be considered when 
you're deciding whether you should be kind to someone. And that was the, the basis from, from which we wrote the song. As you wrote the song, uh, talk to me about the sonics instrumentation that, that we hear, the arrangements that we hear. Um, and because I love that it gives us the vibe that it does. Um, so was this all your idea to have these instruments and have these sounds? Or was this uh, something that Nick Ruth kind of brought in to the table and said, you know, hey, let's, I think this song would be perfect with this kind of style or this kind of sound? Um, definitely. Ins- yeah. I think uh, all of us were, were really chipping in the whole time. Um, I think we wanted to write something up tempo. Um, because I think when you, when you think of the lyrics, be kind, I wanted it to be a celebration, um, and something positive. So I wanted it to be up tempo. And then we were thinking of kind of different grooves we could mess around with, uh, which weren't necessarily the straight kind of four on the floor, um, just like <laughs> kind of thing. And, and yeah, so I think we jammed out and I'm um, like, I think we're, very influenced by like Prince and like Sly and the Family Stone and like trying to make something which had the same kind of like celebratory feel, positive feel. Um, that, was, that was kind of the basis, basis of our starting point. The fact that you had that kind of groovy kind of vibe, um, did that play a role in the way that you wrote this, the, the music and in the way that you kind of figured out what your cadence was going to be when, when you were going to sing it? I mean, yeah, you're, you're, I guess you're always bound by um, uh, the track that you're writing over. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think I've got like voice notes of, of us still like uh, on my phone of when we came up with like certain sections of the song. And yeah, I just, it was just a joy to make. Like we're all genuinely like, just like vibing off of each other and, and having fun in the studio. And I think yeah. you can hear that on the record. Um, you can't really fake the fun in, in a track like this. Like it's either fun to sing or it's not. And this <laughs> Now, one thing that caught my attention of you back uh, when you released You Come First, that was like my first introduction to, to, right. to your music. So like one thing that caught my attention is that like you have some incredible ranges, um, whether highs or lows. and And over the years, because I think that song was 2017, end of 2017, early 2018, I believe. Um, so like yeah. over the years, as you continue to create this, this new music and, and work with new people and try different styles and sounds and such, like how do you feel like your range has kind of evolved vocally? Uh, I think I can sing higher now than I probably could when I started. Um, on this track, I'm also using falsetto, which I... Mm have like never done <laughs> in any of my songs. Um, I've always like, I've, I've maybe done it for like uh, some backing vocals or so if I'm just like harmonizing myself, but like never actually had it on the lead vocal. Um, and so that's kind of been something which I've been playing around with a lot. Um, I think, yeah, definitely inspired by like Bobby Womack and, and James Brown in that respect. And also like Isley Brothers and stuff. Um, but I've always just been terrible at it up until now. So I'd say I'm still pretty terrible at it, but uh, I'm definitely uh, in- including it in my music a bit more. So why did you start to falsetto now with this song? Did, was it the groovy vibe that, that kind of asked for it? Um, or you just wanted to wing it and give it a shot? Definitely winging it. Uh, <laughs> big fan of winging it. Um, but also I think, you know, if you're trying to, if you're trying to convey a feeling of like, uh, the energy going up there's there's only a few ways you could do that like with with the timing how hard you're singing but the easiest way to do it is how high you're singing and uh you know so i guess that's why i wanted to include some falsetto in there um because to me that that felt more that felt exciting um and yeah maybe it might have taken me a couple more take a couple more takes to actually get it right uh, there may be someone else who's like more used to falsetto, but I'm, I'm happy that I'm happy that it's in the track. So now that you're using falsetto with, with, with your music, um, do you, are you considering it for this upcoming new material that you have, that you've been working on or do you yeah, yeah. want to keep it? For sure. I mean, like it's, it's, uh, it's something which it does play a part in, in a lot of the tracks on, on this album. 
so far. It's mainly just, I guess it's mainly like ad libs towards the end of the song, though. Uh, but who knows? Maybe there'll be some just falsetto the whole way through on some songs. I might do it specifically for you, Rob. Oh, there we just, go. That's perfect. I was going to ask. <laughs> I'll name it Rob's falsetto track. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> even, if it's an, even if it's an interlude, I'll be like, as yeah, long yeah, as you yeah. put it in there. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. That's what I'm <laughs> So as far as producer goes for this album, uh, is Nick the consistent producer throughout the entire album or are you also collaborating with other producers? Uh, there isn't like one consistent producer throughout the whole album. Mm -hmm. um, there was for my first album, Sky Adams um, did that. Uh, but yeah, for this one, I've just been, because I've been traveling, well, I was traveling around a lot um, before. The, um, a lot of the time, the, the, you know, the, the person I, I wrote the song with uh, would also like produce it. Um, but yeah, there's a guy called Phil Cook who um, has produced a couple of tracks so far. A guy called Tim Maxey um, and George Moore. There's, yeah, there's, there's a few. Are these producers from back home or is this, are they kind of scattered throughout the world? Tim Maxey's in uh, Atlanta, I think um and then phil cook and george moore are, are in london um but there's yeah there's also the album's not finished yet so uh there's okay. there's still space for people who live in other areas of the world as well so, so what do you what do you personally look for in a producer or a co-writer i think something that's really important to me for writing songs for my own project um is the kind of willingness to spend like an hour, maybe an hour and a half just talking to make sure that you're actually writing about something worth saying. Um, because I think it's, you know, I think l most writers can just like write a song in a day. Um, but can, can you write a song that actually, you know, you're going to be proud of and you're going to be, willing to play in a room for, you know for, in front of anyone and, and not be embarrassed um that's a different question that's a lot harder um and also it takes longer to 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 make something like that um and so i think working with people that are, are willing to actually kind of talk about what you want to write about and kind of go deep with you uh, i think that's something which i really value um yeah but then also, uh, like lyrically, I I have some good ideas, but I would say I'm more of like a melody guy. So definitely, um, when I'm writing with with people, when they're really good lyricists and are able to like um, simplify what I'm trying to say into like a more compact version, I really really respect that, and I find that very difficult to do myself. So when other people can bring that in, you're like, whoa, that's that's impressive. Yeah. It's it's good that you kind of had that um, you kind of have that mentality when it comes to like collaborating with other writers, just because like there's I've heard so many different stories of people that they just jump into into the room with whoever and just start writing, or there's people that get to meet them first or hang out first before they actually step into the studio. Um, but it's cool that right. you kind of know what you like and what you don't like, just because like it saves, it saves money, but it saves your time too. <laughs> just because it like yeah. that creative, that creative process. Like, I feel like once you have something flowing, you don't want to stop it or you don't want to ruin it. 100%. I, I think also when you go into a room with someone, um, the thing that I've learned, I think even just in the last year or so is to almost like, switch off the analytical side of your brain at least for like the first six hours of a writing session um because you want to just be open and see what happens and it, there's nothing more painful especially over zoom um to be like analytically be like oh but is that the right lyric should it be a cause or a but should it, is it but i love you or cause i ah <clears throat> not sure like that's painful so i, I think just kind of being more open with it and then afterwards you can judge it like that's that's something that i've been focusing on and, and working on uh, especially in this in this 
I feel like now more than ever, you have to you have to consider the foundation first before you start kind of nitpicking everything. Yeah, but also just having faith in your own taste mm -hmm. and having faith that, you know, the people that you're wor working with that day also have good taste or a similar taste to you, which might not be good. Um, but like, uh, it's, uh, by, the by the time you're actually like in the studio with someone, it's too late to be like, like uh, analyzing everything and it's not fun either so you can analyze before when you're deciding whether you want to work with this with that person mm -hmm. and then once you're in the room have fun and right. enjoy it right now over the years like as you as you kind of try new things with your music you've had so many incredible like remixes and collaborations um what do you think like how do you think you personally have evolved in the way that you write your music today or the music that you want to write today? Um, I think I, I definitely, um, this is going to sound really pretentious, but I definitely um, try to serve the song first. Uh, whereas in the past I would like, I would write a lot over like beats and stuff. Whereas now I'm very much like um, this is the concept I want to to go in with. And normally I'll like start with a concept and try to make everything around the concept serve the, the purpose of like getting what's the best way like you can you can talk about this concept, whatever that is. Um, and I prioritize that over everything else. Whereas in the past I might have like prioritized the beat or like prioritized a harmony that I was doing, or even just like the way my vocal sounded on a certain bit. Now it's more about what's the most effective way of getting this message out. Doing so, do you discover or do you find the identity of the song instantly? Or is that still a process for you to kind of discover that identity? Well, um, if, I, if I understand your question correctly, I think something that I've been doing for this album is going into the studio knowing that I'm going to write about a specific topic. Oh, got it. Whereas, okay. in past, whereas in the past, I, I would, um, and I still do this, but just in terms of the songs, which seem to be the ones which are on the album, mm. the, the one kind of uh, thing they have in common is that I've known what I wanted to talk about before. Mm. Um, and that's, that's meant that, you know, you, you, you're not kind of jamming and then figuring out what the song's about. Because right. um, I, I think like a year and a half ago, I kept finding myself in a position where I'd have like really cool chords, really cool production, really cool vocal, but it's a song about nothing. Oh, yeah. And it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think the most important thing for me was actually making sure you have something to say first and then work like working uh, backwards from there. Right. Yeah. You got it figured out, man. It, it took some time, but you figured it out. <laughs> oh, I definitely haven't figured it out. But... <laughs> sure, <I'm okay. laughs> so lastly, last year you had um, a successful single freedom with uh, Kygo, which is another big major name out here. Well, around the world too. Um, in, in doing this collaboration with Kygo, like what do you feel you learned from him and how do you feel he impacted either, let's just say your creative process as a whole? Um, I think I learned firstly how talented he is, uh, in real time. Um, literally like I sent, I sent him the song on like, let's say it was a Sunday and by the Monday I had like a legit version of the song, which is very, very similar to the fi like final version. Um, and it sounded really good. And, and I think that 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 just comes with experience and someone knowing what they're doing, like to be able to just so quickly come up with a production that just sounds like world-class. Um, so yeah, I definitely learned how good Kygo is from working with Kygo. <laughs> and as far as like how that impacted you, how did it impact your creative process? Like, would you say like you consider 
his genre of music more now when you're writing music or like maybe like the way that he produced certain sounds, like something that you never used in your music before? Like, did that, do you feel like that impacted you in any way? I, I tell you what, um, well, I actually, like, I, I'd, I'd always considered um, working with electronic or like dance uh, artists. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I had a track with Avicii called 10 More Days, um, track with Don Diablo uh, called Bad and Duke Dumont, uh, The Power. Um, but something that I really liked that Kygo did was he changed a couple chords um, on the on the song that definitely would not have come naturally to me from like a songwriting point of view. Um, and I think that opened my mind to me then thinking about how many of the songs I'd written, which I'd kind of just been comfortable keeping the same chord progression yeah. and actually how actually it might have been more interesting to step out outside of my comfort zone and, um, and change it up even, you know, even just to experiment with changing chords. Um, yeah. I think like the, the chord progression in the pre-chorus of, um, of, uh, of freedom, that was, the, it used to be the same chords as, as like the verse and then he changed it up. And I think it actually adds a lot to the song. Nice. And then you add your falsettos that are brand new and then you got a whole new thing going. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> Roll falsettos. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that on the album, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, congratulations with, with the signing and congratulations with the new single. And uh, definitely looking forward to more music from you. And thank you again for taking the time, Zach.